Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a Star Wars Battlefront 2 video that will hopefully help a lot of you guys with the new Darth Maul skin milestone. In the upcoming patch for Battlefront 2, it seems the milestone will be tweaked, not by lowering the kill requirement, rather by allowing kills with any villain to count towards the milestone. This means that every game you should be able to play as a hero, so while I will still include where to go at the beginning of each round to earn battle points the fastest, so you can get your favourite villain, if you don't get enough battle points, you can still use that match to work towards the milestone. You don't have to be one of those people who doesn't get Darth Maul in the first five minutes and then just quits the game. But before we even get to the maps, if you're playing as Maul, you need to know how strong his abilities are. The Sabre Throw will kill all infantry if it hits them on the way through and the way back to your hand. Ewoks, when they haven't been buffed, will take 3 Sabre hits to kill, but if they use their horn it will take 5 hits, so try to get them ASAP. Wookiees will also take 3, so try to Sabre Throw at them. If the throw hits both times, then it'll only take one more swing to finish them, but do not get hit with their Thermal Imploder because it will do so much damage, so if you see it thrown, dodge away and they may just end up killing themselves with it. And on the hero's front, just run from a 1v1 with Yoda. Keep using your saber throw versus Luke while backing away, and keep an eye out for overswinging against the blaster heroes because they will keep peppering you as you swim. So if you're on half health and see a fresh hero coming towards you, just run. Now there are some maps that are definitely better for a large kill streak, two of the best, both being on Tatooine, but there is still a way to get a decent amount on pretty much any map. Also, just before I begin, you may have gone through the round a different way and gone on a crazy streak still, so this isn't definitively the best way to play, but it's definitely my favourite way to play, and it should hopefully help you guys out. We'll start on the aforementioned planet of Tatooine and the map of Mos Eisley. I would recommend the heavy class as a start, as I will for most maps, and you want to go for command post A as quickly as possible. If you go left early, you should get a great line of sight of the many troopers that are going to spawn there. Maybe pop on your defensive shield when it gets intense, and as soon as you clear A, don't wait for the next wave of spawns to come there, go right and just head for B. You may encounter a trooper before you go inside, but hopefully your shield will have recharged, and you can enter B carefully because there can be a trooper hiding in a corner to catch you off guard in that small room. But there should only be a max of three in there, so continue through B and wait at the other door, because a wave of lots of enemies will then come from the left. You might even die here, and it's very easy to get overwhelmed, but even if you do die, you should have many more battle points than anyone else, and so if you do need more and you haven't got the 4,000, go back to A and help capture it, because that will give you a small trickle of points, and take out any enemies, but you should by now have the 4,000 needed for Maul. In the next phase, again, approach from as far left as you can. Do not go through the doors, because you will get finished very quickly. There may even be a hero at this stage, so don't overcommit. Keep blocking and throwing your saber, and clear any special reinforcements first. Next phase, you want to only go for the right objective if you have teammates willing to assist you. If you're running ahead, then always go to the left. There is some cover in a building there to help you out, and providing there's no Yoda lurking around, you should be able to clear it out yourself. And now we reach the final stage, and just as you have been all game, staying to the left is key here. You do not want to be on the objective, as enemies will come from every direction and you will not last long. So stay just outside it, throw your saber in a few times if it's really quiet, and this phase usually lasts a long time, so staying alive is the key. The second important note for this position is that the enemies will spawn right behind you, but it is only a few at a time, about five maximum, and if you watch the mini-map for threats, then they won't surprise you and they'll just be simple kills to farm. Moving on to the next map, we'll be focusing on the second Death Star, and once again, pick the Heavy class. My setup is the Improved Grenade, the improved combat shield and bounty hunter star cards, the last of which earned you battle points as fast as possible so you will need it for this. Once you spawn on the Death Star 2, head down to the left and get as close as you can to the door on the opposite side of the room. As soon as that door opens, start your sentry up and focus on the assault classes first, because they will rush with a vanguard and are the main enemy that could ruin your start completely. But the moment that door closes, turn right and head to the other command post, because there will most likely be lots of enemies crowded there by now. In the next phase, assuming you have more now, you won't be surprised at all by hearing that staying left is the way to go. That door opens from both sides, so you can press into their spawn to get the kills early, but do not press hard in the first phase, because if you push beyond that door, you will not be able to get back into the battlefront and your maul will be ruined. For the final stage of the Death Star, be wary, and while the two doors on the left may have more people coming through, the door on the far right is usually overlooked, so you'll get some free kills that no one's going to be trying to steal from you. Up now is Yavin 4, and my unpopular opinion that I've always had in Battlefront 2 is that, and I'm not sure I even want to admit this, but I hate Yavin 4 as a map. Not for any specific map design reason, I just never seem to enjoy a match there, but it's actually really good for co-op, 
Maybe the lack of the ATST makes a big difference, but I definitely appreciate the map a lot more now. So start as either the heavy or use the new assault weapon, the E11D. Go straight down the middle, but make sure a teammate is with you because there are quite a few enemies on the point before you get there. Once the middle is clear, you can go left or right, and if you can get there alone, go right. Get a few kills, but then return to the middle after about 30 seconds because a new wave will squeeze through the door on the right side, and that should hopefully give you the 4K. The key for the second phase is to not stay at B, it's extremely exposed, and if you manage to clear it once, which isn't that often, then you'll be facing about 20 enemies spawning way ahead of you, out of range for you, but the sheer number of them will ruin you. So instead, go left to command post A. It should be simple enough to get control of it, there's only 3 or 4 max people there and a few enemies will spawn periodically to keep your numbers rising. Now as the map flattens out, the trick here is not to stay left. In fact, I'd go as far to say ignore the left objective completely and get the right side locked down. You'll have to keep an eye out for a couple infantry spawning behind you in the trees, and sometimes a hero just pops out from the sewers behind the U-wing. But with a teammate, you can spawn trap any enemies coming from the base, and it's not a bad idea to just venture out into the central area as the enemies are spaced out a lot and they're pretty much free kills. Now the final stage is tricky to get under control, but once you do, it is perfect. If you're with mates you can talk to, get them to focus on the heroes immediately, because once them and the Wookiees are out of the way, you will take that point easily, and you can then pick one of the two doors to wait for the enemies to spawn. I tend to pick the right one, and as soon as they appear, throw your sabre and spin right into them, then do a quick 180 and spin back out, and you'll have already taken out the majority of them. I'll get Endor out of the way quickly, as it's the one I tend to get the lowest streaks on, but push forward with your sentry immediately and you'll get a lot of kills, but keep an eye on both of your sides, because the enemy tends to push and flank you a lot on this first stage, so get as many kills as you can before you die. The second stage is just an easy way to die, so go to B, but stay just behind the command post and let them take it, maybe pick a few kills off there, but don't go all out on it, because you need to let them take B in the second stage, because the third stage is where you can get the most kills. If you stay to the left as they enter, and only go to the right across the massive entrance if that point actually starts to get overrun, because you want this stage to last as long as possible. This is because the final stage will get you some kills if you stay up on the upper level, but you will not last long down below, and if a Yoda turns up upstairs, then you may as well just give up then. And now we move on to my favourite map for a huge mall street, as demonstrated by the only kill streak video I've ever posted, in which I only realised how well it was going halfway through and just rushed to turn my computer on and record some of it. But that map, if you didn't already guess, is Jabba's Palace. You need to start as the heavy here, and rather than rushing to the point, you just stay at the top of the steps and pull out your sentry. You need to focus on getting the kills rather than just doing damage to everyone, and make sure to keep an eye out on the corridor immediately to your left, because sometimes a vanguard assault will come through and ruin it completely for you. But once your sentry runs out, run down to B and pull out your personal shield. There will be lots of people here, so just try and get the Wookiee first, and once your weapon overheats, cut the shield and roll away, because by then a second wave should be coming through the main doors, and if you get a few kills here, you should have enough for a villain. In stage 2, you can either pick the left side or the right side, as the enemies will be tightly grouped and perfect for the saber throw. Just don't watch the centre. That's there for the Vaders, the Emperors, or the Iden Versios of the game, but Maul does much better staying to the outside. However, if you want a big streak, you can't let the match end there, so retreat up the stairs and wait for the next phase because it's not worth ending this map on phase 2. Phase 3 is very simple, just let them take the small room to the left and just wait at the stairs, throw your sabre down there, dash in and out of the map limits to make sure you get enough kills, but make sure you move on to the final stage because it's the easiest to survive thanks to the huge main doors that you can hide beside and as you'll have been doing all match, keep your block up, keep launching your sabre and if the carnage does die down, then spin dash into the corridor, hunt down a few, but make sure you get back in time, and you'll have an easy 100 kill streak. We're nearly done now, and the penultimate map is the Ice Planet of Hoth. Now this is the only one where I actually choose the assault over the heavy to start. Everybody rushes to the central objective, so once you're in range, lob a grenade up there, but then look to the left, and there'll be up to 10 enemies spawning at range, which is why I use the resistance blaster for assault and all these guys to the left tend to be forgotten by the other players, which leaves you to just clean house. The second and third phases are very forgettable, so when in doubt just stay left. When you're in the hangar, you won't get so many kills on the left, but you definitely won't die. If you go right, you may get more kills, but there is also a bigger chance you die, so that's completely up to you. The final stage on Hoth is either great or an absolute nightmare. You'll need all your team by your side if you want to clear the objective initially, but if or once you do, push right past it and into their spawns, and just keep cleaning up until your team captures the objective. 
And finally, we reach Kessel. Make sure you turn left immediately, or you'll run straight into a dead end. Pull out your sentry as soon as you see enemies start pouring out from the tunnels, and just like the Death Star, aim for the assaults first because they will rush you immediately. There's no need to move once your sentry ends, just pick off a few enemies until the corridors start spewing troopers again, and a handful of kills from that wave should get you that villain. Once you have more, stay up to the left or you're just going to get overrun. You won't get as many kills from this phase, but as long as you survive, it's all worth it. The next step is of course to keep to the left. Keep the waves at bay as long as you can, but don't be afraid to fall back onto the command post itself because they will continue to push and they'll come through the tightest of entrances, which helps you deal with loads of them at a time. The same goes for the next phase. If you take a step back and finish the enemies as they come through the next choke point, then drop back to the final stage, which is almost as good as the Jabba's Palace finale, but this time there is another entrance for the Rebels. They can also come from the far right and sneak into an elevated position behind you, but they only come through there one or two at a time, so always keep your focus on the main hall and you'll be racking up the kills in no time. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the best way, in my opinion, to get to Darth Maul the fastest, and then once you get him, how to never let him go while continuing to stack up the kills. Leave this video a like if you found it helpful, it certainly took a long time to make, so I hope you did enjoy. Subscribe and you'll know when all future videos come out, but thank you for watching this video, and hopefully I will see you next time.